Thanks for joining us today. I'm Gabe Garish, owner of Backwoods Pursuit, and today we're going to do a GPO rangefinder binocular review. These are the GPO Range Guide 2800s in the 10x50 and the 10x32. We're going to go over the differences between these two as well as how they perform next to a bunch of other rangefinder binoculars that we tested here recently. We're going to go over the features, some of the things that they performed well at, and some of the things that they didn't, so to help you decide if they're right for what you need. Really appreciate it. If you hit that subscribe button and follow us on Facebook and Instagram, check out our website, backwardspursuit.com. We've got a ton of other gear reviews over there. Put links to all that down in the description for you, as well as a link to these two GPO Range Guide 2800 binoculars. Let's get started. All right, to get started, let's look at some of the differences in specs between these two. Here you have a 50 millimeter objective in the Range Guide 2800, and this comes in an eight and a 10 magnification. Here is the 32 millimeter model, 32 millimeter objective, also comes in an eight and a 10 magnification. Weight difference here, 35.2 ounces on the 50 millimeter version, and 24.3 ounces on the 32 millimeter of uh, objective here. So a significant weight savings with the smaller object, a uh, smaller objective here in the range guide 2832 millimeter. The uh, eye relief here is pretty similar, but you do have a little bit more eye relief in the 50 millimeter model. In the 8 by uh, 50 you have 19 millimeters of eye relief, and in the 10 by 50 which is what these are here, you have 17 millimeters of eye relief. In the range guide 32 millimeter here, the eight magnification, the eight by 32 gives you 16, or I'm sorry, gives you 18 millimeters of eye relief, whereas this 10 by 32 gives you 16 millimeters of eye relief. So effectively with the, the 50 millimeter objective here, you've got one additional millimeter of eye relief, so a little bit more eye relief in the larger version here. Now on to some of the differences in the range finding specs and abilities here. Now the, the specs wise, they both indicate that they have the same ability of a just over 3000 max range on the range finding ability here, and that's on a, a, a reflective target. Now when we tested these, uh, the, the range guide 50s here, we were able to get over 3200 yards on these or using these. And with the 32 millimeter, we got just over 2500 yards was the most that we were able to get out of these. So we did get a little better performance out of the larger objective here. Uh, that larger objective is a little bit easier to, to grab that return laser. So we did get a little better performance there. But as far as the specs go, they have the same specs in their ranging ability. Now the, the display that you get in these is a little bit different. Uh, and that's for, uh, there's a couple of things here that are significantly different about this. The range guide 32 here has additional features that the range guide 50 does not. This came out after the 50. Now the range guide 32 has auto adjust a brightness. So you can set the level uh, of what you would like uh, independently, or you can set it to auto and it's going to automatically adjust to the brightness uh, depending on what you need for the outside brightness uh, for the ambient light. So that is super nice because you don't have to mess with changing the brightness or wonder if your range finder is on or the battery is dead or whatnot which that can be the case with the 50s. Uh, typically though, you'll just put that on a kind of middle of the road, but on really low light that can blow you out and you can just see just the, the red letters. And again, the, the display here is red on both of these, which is awesome. But when you when don't have automatic adjust, uh, which the Range Guide 50s do not currently, uh, that is a bit of a downside to the 50s, whereas I really like that in the 32s. Now the 32s also have uh, the, uh, so a couple of an additional features. They both give you a line of sight, in your display, so you can display just line of sight in both of them. You can display line of sight and the angle compensated range. They both come with that. So for your archery application, or if you just need that angle compensated range for say a long range rifle shot or something of that nature, they both display that. And they both display the temperature outside, the outside temperature as a secondary display, as well as the angle. So that you can display a range of say 350 yards at a 10 degree angle, and they're both gonna display that. And those are all displayed in the display at the same time so it doesn't cycle through one number or another. So that is really nice. Now where the 32 has something additional, you can also display as a secondary display with the 32, the pressure, the outside pressure 
or the, the, the humidity as well. So you have some additional options there. And then of course you have that automatic brightness adjust, which is really nice in the 32. I do wish that both of them had the ability to get rid of the line of sight if that's something you wanted to do. Say that's a, a, something I prefer in an archery range finder where all I wanna see is the angle adjusted range. I wish that was one of the display options, but it currently isn't that, that I could see here in the, the options menu but at least you do have it there and it's not something that cycles through to where you have to wait for that on the secondary display. It's always there. It's right below the primary number, the line of sight number, and it's just a little bit smaller. So it's real, still really easy to read, but I wish it was something where you could make that the only thing that is displayed. Now as some of the physical feature differences between these two and some of the things that are the same, they both give you three positions, three click positions in the eye cups, and there's really no play in the eye cups. They're really fantastic. That's something that is a common complaint with binoculars, but they did a fantastic job with the eye cups. There's a lot of resistance, so they don't move accidentally, and they're very, very smooth. They're not real bulky either on the interior of the eye cups, so it doesn't take up space in the, around the bridge of your nose where you're gonna have a problem. Uh, seating those into your, into your eye sockets very well. So they do a fantastic job in that regard. Now the, the 10 by 50s are not threaded for a tripod adapter um, and the, the 10 by 32s are, as you can see, I've got a stud here screwed into this for mounting them on a tripod. I wish that the 10 by 50s were, uh, but they aren't. And if that's the case, we found these Aussie Albino clamps to work really well. They do a good job and they're really a low form factor as well. So even if they aren't threaded like this one's not, it is a bummer, but there's a, a very good product out there, these clamps that work really well if uh, something like this is not threaded for a vinyl adapter. Now the focus wheel on these is super smooth. It's one of my favorite focus wheels of the optics that we've tested over the years. Very, very smooth. There's no play in there and there's not so much resistance that it causes you to move the optic when you're trying to focus. They're, it's very nice, very smooth. Uh, so uh, they do a great job with their, the mechanisms they use in their focus wheels. Really, really like that. Now, both of them similarly do not have a locking diopter or focus mechanism here with rangefinder binoculars. You have one side that focuses the reticle and the other side that is your diopter adjustment. And I wish that they did have a locking diopter and focus mechanisms because it can be a little trickier to get these set up with a rangefinder binocular than this, a typical binocular because you, you adjust that reticle to be in focus and that can adjust the overall focus just a little bit. So I always recommend bringing that right eye into focus, uh, adjust that reticle uh, to, to where it's just perfect and make sure that that side is in focus and then go over to your diopter and get to bring that diopter into focus. And because of that, that extra step that you have to take with rangefinder binoculars and the two focus mechanisms and the diopter here, it's, I wish it was something where you had those locking, but they're very, very stiff, so they're not gonna move on you. So it's not really a problem or an issue. Both of them are quite stiff. So it's, it's not a, an issue here with these, but I do wish that they were locking. That would be an upgrade for me. Now, as far as how these are next to similar rangefinder binoculars in their class, these are the Sig Kilo 6K and the RangeGuide 2800. They're both 32 millimeter rangefinder binoculars. They're nearly identical in size and weight. Um, and they have obviously a lot of differences in them, which we're not gonna go into that entirely here, but they, they do have a lot of the similarities in their physical features at least. And then the range guide 20 hundreds in a 50 millimeter. Here you have the Athlon Cronus 50 millimeter and they're very, very similar again in size and weight. And they're actually both smaller here than the Swarovski EL range, which a little bit shorter in overall height and the bulk here that the, the range TAs have in their, their uh, electronics here on the underneath side, pretty impressive that these have a similar or smaller form factor than a 42 millimeter here in the range guy, or in the, the Swarovski EL range. So very nice in their size for a 50 millimeter binocular. They're very impressive. Now in the optical performance department, these were both very, very exceptional in their optical performance. The 50 millimeters and the 32s do not have applied ballistics integrated. So if that's something that you want or need in your optics, there's other options like those SIG Kilo 6K and the 32 do have applied ballistics. Uh, there's a lot of other options if you need that in the, in the rangefinder binocular, but these do not have that. So keep that in mind. But the trade-off for me in that is that you get a little better performance out of the optics and the cost is not nearly as high as some of those rangefinder binoculars out there, particularly in the larger 
uh, version here, the 50 millimeter version. Optically, these 50 millimeter rangefinder binoculars here performed just below some of the alpha glass, which was really, really impressive. And there's just not a lot of the 32s in rangefinder binocular out there. And so these in those six kilo were very, very close, but most of us prefer these just a little bit optically over the SIG kilos. But of course you give up a little bit in rangefinder performance with these and that applied ballistics. So there's a give and take there, but these were both fantastic in the optical performance department. Both of these did have just a little bit that we noticed of, you could call it that fishbowl effect or whatnot. But when you had these on a tripod, looking through at a long distance, if your face or head moved just a little bit, the edges of that image that you're looking through can kind of sh shift just a little bit, just around the outer edges. And it was less prominent in the 32s than it was in the 50s, but the image in the 50s was, was better than the 32s, we felt like. We felt that, that this was one of the, definitely one of the top performance, particularly in its price class. Uh, for a rangefinder binocular, but you did have that little bit of movement on the edges, that little bit of a fishbowl effect. And the, the 32s here had, uh, interestingly, a little bit of a bluish tint to them, whereas the 50s did not. The bluish tint is, is not nearly as significant as some of those Sig Kilo 6Ks or the 10Ks, but there is a little bit of that blue tint, so keep that in mind. If that's something you like or don't like, that may affect your, your view of this, if this something is gonna work for you. Now, another thing to note in the optical, but also in the rangefinder performance is that the 50 millimeter version here was a little more sensitive to the, the placement of your face so that you could see the readout of the rangefinder display. The 32 was much less that way. There wasn't uh, the kind of situation where if your head moved and you would lose the readout or not be able to see that. Whereas that was a little bit more the case with the 10 by 50s, a little more sensitive in placement and a little less forgiving in use with the 10 by 50s. Now let's take a quick look through these so you can see some of the menu options and the differences in the different displays that you have with the GPO range guide 2800s. Now the only difference between the 50 millimeter and the 32 is the 32 has that auto adjust and the brightness, but otherwise the 32 also gives you the option to display primarily that line of sight and then secondarily either the pressure, the outside pressure or the outside humidity. Otherwise they are pretty much the same. All right, I threw the phone scope on the range guide 50 millimeter here to start. I'm gonna show you the display options here with this one, and then we'll move over to the 32. To get started here, you're gonna go ahead and push the fire button. That's gonna bring up the reticle, and then hold down the settings button, and then that's gonna bring up your options. So we're on line of sight only, that's LOS only, and then push the fire button to cycle to the next one. You'll have the line of sight and then the angle in degrees below that. Next option is the line of sight with the horizontal range below that. And the next option is the line of sight on top and then the temperature, the outside temperature below that. And then it brings you back to line of sight only. So let's go ahead and then select the horizontal range. And then we can go ahead and range and you can see we're 399.1 yards. The horizontal range is 397.9 yards. And if we go back in here and then uh, set this to, let's say temperature, it's gonna display the line of sight and then the temperature. So 60 degrees Fahrenheit outside currently. All right, over here on the 32 millimeter, same thing, you push the, the fire button to turn it on, then hold down the settings to bring up the menu. Line of sight only is the uh, top of the menu. Next, just like the other one, angle, line of sight and angle, then line of sight and horizontal range, then line of sight and temperature, the outside temperature again. Now what changes here on the 32s, you have these options, the line of sight and the outside pressure, and the line of sight and humidity. So let's go ahead and select humidity, take a look and see what that says, 382 or 388 yards and the humidity of 34, uh, but similar to the 50, but the 32 adds those two extra options at the end of the menu. Now also is different on the 32 millimeter here is that if you hit settings again, that auto is gonna start to blink, and that is the display brightness. So if we hit that power fire button, it goes a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then eight, nine, and then auto. So I like to leave that on auto. It works really well for the brightness, and it just makes it super easy to then go back and utilize that. And of course, yards and meters on both of them is an option. Fahrenheit and Celsius is an option on both of these. Best and last, that's whatever range you wanna grab. You wanna grab the best uh, range that it's gonna grab or the last one, meaning the farthest target. That's kind of nice for some applications, but I like to leave this on best as well. Then we're ready to go. So that is the GPO range guide 2800 and the 10 by 50 and the 10 by 32. I'll put links to these down in the description for you so you can check them out for yourself. 
and drop any questions or comments for us. We'd love to help you out if we can, point you in one direction or the other. Thanks for watching here today, and we will see you next time.